Welcome back. Today we're going to look at a single cylinder Briggs and Stratton engine and we're going to be looking at what goes on behind that throttle control with the governor, the spring, and the top speed. And then we're going to look at it on an engine that's running. This engine I took out of a rotting mower. The compression release went bad on this so it just wouldn't crank over. Besides that the motor runs good. It's a 2012 model so when that happened it was about 11 years old. But uh, today we're going to talk about governors and, and how to adjust the top speed. After this little demonstration, we'll go out to the engine that I just put a valve seat in. And we're going to check the top speed and the idle speed. I just got a tachometer today in the mail. I never had one before. I never really needed it. But if you're going to do videos and show people how to do things, you need to be a little more exact than just setting it by ear. So obviously there's other videos about, you know, how this all works here and, and how to adjust it. But I, I never saw one from showing you from the back what actually happens from, from, from back here where you can really understand what's going on. So the way this works, th this here goes to your throttle lever on the carburetor. This here is your, your governor arm. And this is what you're moving when you move the throttle control on the tractor, on the dash. Okay, so right now it's at idle. It was if your speed was all the way down. Now when you put this up, it's going to go, if you put it all the way to choke, then this lever comes up and pushes against a little rod in here. But we're not going to go that far. We're going to go to somewhere right about there. And that's going to be where you would set this for full speed, for full engine speed. So what happens is this governor, when it's running, the governor wants to push that way to slow the engine down. Now it's going to stop, you know, somewhere right about here, it starts to get tension because that's where the throttle starts to pull on the spring. So as you move this, you're stretching a spring it was already back all the way. I wasn't holding it. So the, the, the governor wants it to run somewhere up here. And as you pull, push your throttle up, see how that moves? And this is moving back because when you move the, your throttle to a higher speed, there's a spring connected to the back of the linkage under here. It's connected to that arm right there. So when you move your throttle to speed up, Let's start back here again, where I'm holding it a little bit. You're starting to speed up. You're pulling on a spring, and that spring is connected to this. And the way to adjust the speed is to bend a little arm that that spring is connected to. So I'm going to rotate this so you can see what's actually going on in there. Get this reset here. So now it's all the way at slow speed. We're going to move this back. And you see that lever moving? And there's a spring connected to that. See that spring right there? So when you get up to full speed, now you're stretching that spring. Well, that spring is pulling against the other end of this governor linkage here. See, it's pulling it back like this so that the engine runs faster and I'm pushing on it and see the spring the spring pulls this lever to the rear well inside of the block are the weights and the little rod that pushes on this and it's trying to push it that way but you got the spring pulling it back this way so there's an adjustment this part right here I got to move the camera a little bit and let's move this down where it's back in the picture. Yeah, it's a little buried. There we go. Let me see if I can get a pointer here. Okay. So this little tab right here, this little tang that sticks out. Here's your spring. It's connected to this. So now if you watch that, that's going to move. When I go towards 
full speed, that goes up, stretches out the spring. Okay. So if you need to change your, your top speed, you need to bend this. If your top speed is too high, you bend this down a little bit so it don't stretch the spring as far. If you need your top speed to be a little bit higher, you're going to bend this up this way. Now, it's not easy to get to. It's buried back there because you really shouldn't ever have to mess with it. But you're going to either bend it up like that. That's going to make it that's going to make your top speed even faster because it's going to stretch that spring more. It's going to put more tension to push it back this way against the governor weights that are inside the engine. So there, there's a fine balance between where this is bent at and uh, the pressure from this from the governor rod inside there. And that's what wherever this is bent to and the tension on that spring that decides your top speed when you put your throttle all the way up both of these work together to keep it at that one single you know speed which is 3300 rpms 3350 you you can bend that and make it run faster but you're going to shorten the life of the engine so it's, it's not recommended most engines are probably around 3350 something like that you could look it up for your specific mower because it really has to do with also the blade speed. You know, now the pulley should be made up so that when this is where it's supposed to be, your blade speed is going to be no higher than what it should be. So now we're going to go out to this tractor that I worked on that I put the engine back together. And when I started it, the engine speed was, I thought it was too high. I didn't have a tachometer. Well, now I have one, so we're going to go out and check it and see what, see where I have it adjusted at by ear. Okay, so now we're out here with this mower, and this is the tachometer that I got. Just, uh, like it's like $23, $24 on Amazon. This clips onto the spark plug wire, and it's supposed to turn this on and read the engine speed, as long as I have it set on the right mode. So we're going to hook this up and see what happens. Now here I'm trying to figure out this new tachometer. It has two buttons on the front. And one is mode and one is set. And uh, it, it wasn't reading right at all. It wasn't consistent. And it turns out I needed to wrap that wire around the spark plug wire. With just clipping it on the boot, it just wasn't consistent. I wrapped it around and then it worked a lot better. And I ended up back at, at mode two, which was the preset. And then it worked, it read pretty consistent then. Now we're back on two. Let's see if it backfires again.
All right, so at full speed, it was reading about 3250 or so. Now that we finally got a steady reading out of it. So I'm going to speed it up just a little. All right, so I'm going to reach in from the outside here with this screwdriver and try and bend that tang that's holding the end of the spring. Now, your tools may vary. If this is on a different mower or, or machine, you may be able to go in from the back like I did previously on that display model and bend it with pliers, but you, you want to bend it up to stretch that right, spring out a little bit. bit. I'm going to leave it go right there. It sounds plenty fast enough to me, and I don't have 100% faith in that thing reading right. Because some of the videos I saw, they used this clip, just clipped it on the plug wire close to the spark plug, and it was supposed to work. And you got this clip right here. I clipped that right on the boot, right at the end of the wire. And without winding the, the wire around the, the plug wire, it just really didn't read. It wasn't consistent at all. So we, we got it to read consistent. And it's showing 3250, 3260. It sounds plenty fast enough to me. I'm going to leave it right there. So, you know, I, I bent that lever in there that the spring is hooked to. And it was a little bit faster. At least it sounded that way to me. So hopefully this helps you understand what actually is happening there. So like and subscribe. We'll be doing some more things on this tractor, getting it ready to, to use again. I did cut grass with it the other day. It, it cuts all right. I got to sharpen the blades and probably put a dry belt on it here. This belt here looks like it's getting kind of kind of frayed. So we'll get a good look at that next time and, and see what we're going to do with that and get this thing all ready to go.